Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of an Escar Heat 5 career mode here on the channel. Hope you're all having a great day. We have an interesting one on the way. We're headed to Plate Racing today, Talladega, where we have seen a new winner in all eight races of the season so far as you see all the point standings. Uh, Chase Birdie there at the top in the Xfinity Series. The Cup Series, of course, our main focus, obviously. Uh, we have had a very solid start to the season. We have yet to find victory lane. Hopefully we can do that at least within the first, you know, 15 races but four of the top five drivers in the regular season standings have yet to find victory lane with the regular season leader however uh chastain at the top of the board bubba wallace still out with injury we roll into talladega here and nascar had an announcement this weekend a very uh interesting announcement to say the least now they have announced that there will be new tire compounds introduced here in the coming weeks now as they will continue to use the normal yellow Goodyear but there's going to be a softer compound Goodyear used at select tracks and a harder compound tire used at other tracks as well with the majority of the tracks though being the baseline Goodyear tire that we've used this whole career mode which is very very exciting Brody Kostecki in the field again here this weekend in Talladega for RCR. Another exciting thing, Anthony Alfredo, Timmy Hill there in the 51 as well. A lot of exciting things coming into this Talladega weekend and we were going to start rolling here with qualifying in this top golf machine. We are racing double duty this weekend, not Xfinity Series, but we're doing the truck series actually uh, from Bristol. Uh, but yeah, you guys know the drill here when it comes to qualifying at any form of a plate race. It's a lost cause. So uh, we just got the car around the track coming to the line. It's going to be P40 no matter what we do and you're gonna see uh short enough p40 behind Brody Kostecki Zane Smith Chandler Smith Shane Van Gisbergen as well all the way down there in 35th place there Bellaney p20 still looking for his first win after a miserable start to the season and looking at the front there it's Austin Sindrick on pole alongside another four dark horse Mustang Ryan Priest Corey Heim in the 23 there into the top five with the Benedetto uh as well as Chase Elliott Kyle Busch in the Triclus machine rounding out the top 10 Truck Series action from Bristol here in the top golf uh, number one Toyota Tundra getting ready to roll here as a track that I really enjoy Bristol, but we know with this team that we're racing for, uh, it's not a great team. It's a four-star team. We're really just not necessarily racing for wins. We're racing to give them an understanding on how to better develop their program going forward now uh, in these uh, coming seasons, basically. So it's really just about kind of showing up, having fun, doing what we can, and, and providing feedback. Uh, to the team here as well. Tony Bradinger, as you guys know, uh, on the same team as well. And that number 11 machine is I actually caught the outside wall here in stage one. It was it was pretty rough, honestly. Bristol, one of my uh, best tracks, but I was struggling. It was P16 in stage at number one. Not pretty by any means there. Behind uh, Doug Barnes Jr., Dean Thompson just behind us. Sakonori Ogata moving forward here now. Stage two, final lap this was, and I had not really gone anywhere. Uh, we had Marco Andretti just behind myself. I'm behind Timmy Hill coming to the line. And yeah, uh, P14 in stage number two. Again, uh, not pretty uh, going into the third and final stage. So we focus in on that third and final stage, and we only had 10 laps to go in this race in this moment here now and we're I mean running midfield basically uh, this whole race but as we went into these closing laps I would start to find a little bit of pace Tad Moffat out in front now looking like he was going to run away with the win at this point in time now just a handful of laps to go now as I was starting to get up to the outside and, and try to actually make some headway forward uh, as we continue on to six laps remaining in this race five to go now and to the outside of Timmy Hill he got uh, Bailey Curry as well just in front in that ninth position as we're starting to really roll in this second lane and it looks like a top 10 is going to be in the cards here now up to P9 as we exit turn two and that was pretty much it you can see the gap too big to overcome now to Daniel Hemrick there for the Andretti Global Machine it's Tad Moffat getting his first ever truck series victory here from Bristol as we would exit turn four down the front straightaway to cross the line for a ninth place effort there so overall uh, pretty happy with how that went. And you see the finishing order there. Uh, Matt Mills, Dean Thompson, Landon Huffman, Dal uh, Dalton Sargent up there all in the top five. Uh, as we now will focus in on some NASCAR Cup Series competition here from Talladega. No Xfinity this weekend. Let's get ready to roll in Talladega. We're here from Talladega Super Speedway for our second plate race of the season. Back in the Daytona 500, we saw Todd Gilliland pull off the shock victory. Will we see another shock winner today? 
Uh, it's a very real chance we see that today, Mike, if not a shock winner, at least a new winner. I agree with Clint. We, we have yet to see a repeat winner this year, but that's a trend we're seeing in all three series right now. Uh, it is unprecedented, really. A new winner today will happen. Okay, team. Uh, thanks for the hard work this weekend. Let's uh, just try to keep the car clean and, and move forward. Yep, 10-4. Let's have a strong day. Anything can happen here, so be ready. Now, before we go green for this Geico 500, after our uh, contact with SVG last episode in Mid-Ohio, he actually reached out to us uh, with a quick, brief phone call uh, in the off week. Take a listen. Hey, man. Just wanted to apologize for last week. I drove over my head. It won't happen again. Uh, don't worry about it, man. Uh, we both struggled there at the end and got screwed, so let's just focus forward. Have a good uh, Talladega. Yeah, you too. We're ready to roll then here from Talladega for the Geico 500. So things seem to be patched over with Shane Van Gisbergen as a green flag is out and we are racing from this Talladega Super Speedway. Speaking of SVG, he starts there just a few rows in front of us in that number 97 blue and white quad, quad lock. Uh, Camaro there for Trackhouse Racing. You saw John Hunter Nemechek there in the pre-race sent to the back of the field as Austin Sindrick leads us underway. Brody Kostecki there is going to tuck in line just behind us in that RCR number 33 machine. Now, of course, Kostecki, just in real life, uh, it was just announced that he is actually coming back to uh, his team, of course, that he had a whole bunch of weird issues with in the offseason, uh, which resulted him not being in the car for the start of the supercar season. So, it's been a whole mess over there, but it seems like they've finally got it uh, resolved at least a, a bit enough to put him back right, in the car at least here now settling in behind SVG here lap one of 14 in stage number one now we're back to the 25% race we ran 35% in mid Ohio we're back to 25% today I am looking to move through with potential 35% races for more ovals going forward but stay tuned on that uh, as I, I I'm looking for maybe a couple of, the, of changes with the overall mod that allows 35% to see if I can actually pull it off or not. So uh, I'll hopefully have some news to share on that in the coming episodes. Right now, however, uh, just settling in behind that 97 of Shane Van Gisberg and Sammy Smith, their Rookie of the Year competitor on the outside of that 97 and the 27, uh, Andretti Global. Uh, Andretti, a really interesting dynamic right there at that team right now. We've seen Carson Osevar really step it up in his second season while Smith has been struggling a little bit there, but kind of expected. He is a Cup Series rookie. Limited practice time, of course, in these next-gen cars. So it's going to take a while for Sammy Smith to kind of get his bearings under him, uh, but I think he's going to be okay now as you see lap five. Now, everybody... Uh, going through in the background. Riley Herbst has lost contact with the main pack here, so he is going to be hoping for a yellow, but he's not going to go a lap down in 10 laps, so it's going to be not the end of the world for him now, as you can see uh, on the far outside there, Austin Dillon dropping backwards, but we're just slowly but surely working our way forward. It's following this 97 quad lock machine. Up into the top 15 goes SVG. We're up to P16. There you see Danny Hamlin on the outside. Hamlin, notorious, of course, uh, plate record. He's always been so good at these types of tracks. He's still looking for that win in his final season now. Joe Gibbs Racing, of course, two wins on the season for the team as a whole. Gibbs uh, got the win in Gateway, and last episode, Christopher Bell survived the chaos and strategy and uh, was able to hang on to the victory there in mid-Ohio when we were able to come home in second place there. Uh, up and now to the top 10, to the inside of Corey LaJoy. He's had an up-and-down start to the season, but he's been on a bit of a, a downward uh, trend in these recent episodes. But I'm in a supercar sandwich right now. I got SVG in front of me. I got Brody Kostecki just behind myself now. As room say that maybe Brody Kostecki is looking at a full-time Xfinity Series ride for next season in this career mode, which would be, of course, season four. Three to go in the stage, and here's the situation. Nobody can make it to the end of the stage on field because we've had no cautions. We've got two laps of field right now. We're coming to two to go. But it's so close as everybody's going to be heading into the pit lane likely within these next few laps as we have a moment with the 97. Here comes Christopher Bell, Byron, myself. The field light comes on now. So that tells me we would have ran out before we had made it to the checkered in the stage. So we made the right call here as over half the field is coming in one go right there with Todd Gilliland, your Daytona 500 winner right at the back. So we get into the pit lane. Fortunately, I had a reference car because I'm really bad at entering the pits at Talladega when I'm like the front car. So fortunately, uh, we got down to pit speed. Caution's going to be out, and it's a two of Austin. Cindric, your pole winner. Tire blowing down the back straight away. You see the smoke pouring out of the back of the Penske machine, and the caution will fly. And that means... We lost any chance of stage points because we're obviously in the pit lane. So we end up P17. We're the first one off of pit road. 
So there is uh, an advantage here for stage two. We will be leading. Shane Van Gisbergen is actually going to get the stage win. Jones, Elliott, Cindric, LaJoy, Suarez all up there. Daniel Suarez has had a rough go with this new Meyer Shank team. They seem to be having a lot of issues within that team uh, mechanically and, and reliability issues here now. Stage two, however, it's underway. And now we have been projected into the front of this pack because of just pure luck. I mean, it's it was bad luck that we lost any chance of stage points because of the caution but good luck that it was able to at least put us up front for stage two again stage one was 14 laps stage two as well 14 laps we got brad kozlowski just behind myself there has been a few rumors circulating about kozlowski in the garage area here recently that there is potential that this could be as well his final season in the nascar cup series just like denny hamlin so that's something we're going to really have to pay attention to as we lead the way down this bank straight away into turn three and now we're going to get amped here from Talladega. Let me know uh, what you think about some of those free cam flyby uh, angles that we can now get here. Ryan Priest, briefly, to the lead as my teammate Christopher Bell moving him forward now. But Bell gets disconnected from that 15. We go back to the front here. Kozlowski, uh, a really good pusher, but in the next-gen era, uh, Kozlowski certainly hasn't been the best pusher in the cup series now he's more of the guy that you want to avoid because he's probably going to spin you out if he's on your rear bumper at talladega or daytona uh but lap three we're only on lap three in the stage and it feels like it's been packed of action already christopher bell to my outside and he would actually get to the lead of this race and he's going to jump down in front of me kyle bush in the 99 trackhouse machine to the outside but then bell he actually surprisingly jumps back up to the outside so we stay to the inside here and we will go back forward now and take the lead back here from Talladega three wide behind us here as we come to lap five of this stage and I see the 31 of Matt DiBenedetto on the way we know that car is a rival so we're gonna have to be careful if he manages to get up here fortunately that's not gonna happen right now as we continue leading this race absolutely dominating so far stage number two eight laps to go a nice change of scenery to be up in the front of a pack race and most importantly, controlling the pack race. Here comes that Valvoline machine. William Byron is on a 73 race winless streak. Byron has been so consistent, but he has not been able to win. As we exit turn four, we get back clear, but crash in the back. That's Taylor Gray in the 47, who's gone around the 15 of Priest involved. SVG as well as Kostecki all get a piece of it. And the caution flies here from Talladega. We continue to lead. Everybody going to head into the pits, of course, to fill it up on field, get four fresh tires. Nobody out of the race, however, Taylor Gray will continue on. So we will be leading for this restart here in these closing laps of stage number two. I think it's only going to be two or three laps of racing when we get back going. Alex Bowman and the colleague machine gains a spot there now as we are ready to roll here. Lap 11 of 14, actually going to be four laps of racing here to settle everything in stage at number two. It's been action packed here in Talladega so far. We've gone from the back to the front. And since we've gotten to the front, we've been able to maintain track position the whole way through, which has been absolutely fantastic fantastic in this Geico 500 now plate races often go against us we've had some bad luck here when it comes to the way these races end and hopefully we can kind of put that to the side today as we head down this bank straight away leading the way you see the sun shining off there into turn number three speaking of the sun got to witness the uh, solar total eclipse uh, recently here a few days ago I was very fortunate enough to actually be in the line of totality let me tell you it was absolutely breathtaking actually I'll put a video up on the screen right now uh, <laughs> completely unrelated but honestly the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life and I'm still in awe over it 
So yeah, there's a video of it very briefly. We continue to lead down this front straightaway trial now in front of this colleague machine, Alex Bowman, who's had a, a really interesting season. Last episode, things didn't quite work out for him, but now you see me jump down to the inside. He goes to the top because here comes my teammate of Ty Gibbs now to the rescue as we would stick in line with him. Bowman on the top. He's got help coming from that 22 power raid machine. Joey Logano, two laps to go in stage number two at this point now, and Bowman is going to pull up alongside. Here comes his teammate Matt DiBenedetto, the part-time 31 car, going to give us a huge shot to the rear bumper through the center of one and two. We know that that 31's not here to play nice, and he's immediately going to shove me to the inside, and he's going to get to the outside. Hopefully, I got help coming from behind with my teammate. No, Gibbs jumps up in line with the 31. He's trying to go get the stage victory and get a playoff point. Fortunately, when Gibbs got to my outside and made a three wide, we actually had help from my other teammate of Denny Hamlin, and that kept me forward to this final lap of stage number two down this bank straight away, looking for help from the number 11 and here we go down this bank straight away the Alaska Airlines pushing us in that Toyota as now to the inside of Debedadetto and hopefully we can get clear which we will into turn three clear for the lead Hamlin behind as well an alliance teammate Eric Jones there for Legacy Motor Club in the number 43 as we exit turn four down this front straight away Hamlin banks off he jumps up top here comes Eric Jones as we come through this trioval for the final time in stage two but it's not going to be enough from the 43 we will come through to get a playoff point we win stage number two as Larson crosses the line all the way in the back there but a playoff point a much needed playoff point and stage points as well all right boys uh good stuff let's uh, do that for one more stage love it mate a great stage there so now uh, we're going to come in and, of course, fill it up on field again, take four tires. Suarez, Busher, Byron in the top ten as well. Kozlowski, Hamlin, Gregson, Jones for all the full-timers. Noah Gregson, uh, a much-needed good points day so far. It has not been the season he uh, certainly would like to have. And, and same for, uh, say, the likes of Ryan Bellaney now as we get ready to roll for a stage. Number three, the green flag is out. It's going to be 15 laps of racing here. So we only have one extra lap compared to stage number two. Uh, this is also kind of another reason I'm looking into maybe doing 35% for all the ovals. But the main reason I've hesitated is uh, the mod that brings longer race lengths at a bunch of tracks, it creates different racing with the AI. It's called more three wide racing and some of the tracks it really just looks kind of dank to me to where I'm not a huge fan of it. It just kind of looks uh, out of place is kind of the big thing. Uh, example was I tried it at Martinsville and cars would just go into a corner and just jump up to the outside wall out of nowhere and just kind of move backwards and it just felt really out of place and unnatural. Uh, so that's kind of why I'm avoiding it here on the ovals so far. So I'm seeing if there's a way we can use it uh, on the ovals uh, but as well of course uh, you know, keep the normal used to AI that we're used to here uh, in the past of this game. So we continue on through this trial. Well, you got Noah Gregson and his colleague teammate just behind Chris Busher uh, behind that 31 Ty Gibbs as well into the mix now as we have 14 laps of racing to go here from this Talladega Super Speedway as we have been in control all stage two and now to start stage three. Here comes the 31 of Mante Benedetto down this bank straight away. We're going to try and throw a below but we've gone too far high and we tried to overcorrect it and it's not enough and now we've been shuffled out to the outside three wide Matt DiBenedetto to the lead of the race alongside Noah Gregson Zane Smith Chris Busher all up here comes uh, the nine of Elliot William Byron in the 24 fortunately we have help from Alex Bowman who's going to give us a big push we'll take a look at the replay on that one now as we get to the bank of the nine of Elliot DiBenedetto going backwards three wide in the middle but you're going to see I just I went for a block on the exit of turn two. That's what I was aiming to do and I just simply got it wrong. Look at that. I just went too high. I tried to cover him off there at the last second and nearly wrecked myself doing it. The, the rivals at play tracks play a way bigger role than I expected. We saw the same thing in the Daytona 500. So we hit the reset button. We focus in. We know we can still move forward here. Uh, now as we get to the bank of Chase Elliott, we're still three wide on the outside. So not the ideal situation uh, as we continue on with help from that 16 of Alex Bowman. Eventually, we're able to get down to the second lane. William Byron on the inside with 12 laps to go in this race now. Uh, Riley Herbst as well up into the mix, but you're going to see the 17 to the 
outside now in that third lane. He's going to go backwards now down this back straightaway as we split through this middle. Uh, as right now, it's still Noah Gregson out in front. I mean, he would be able to put a lot of issues to rest if he could pick up this victory today. Uh, as now Elliot jumps down to the inside, I'm going to not hesitate to stay to the top. We're going to continue following the 31 of Matt DiBenedetto now and get that slipstream from him. And really, let's see if we can maybe hang him out and, and shuffle him back. I think it's going to be really important uh, if we're going to have an opportunity to win this race is to get this 31 out of the mix for the race victory. So now eight laps of field coming to 10 laps to go as we're going to get to the inside of the 31 nearly contact right there but we we're able to get him out of the mix now and we're also going to settle in behind our teammate of Ty Gibbs we'll let him in and we got help coming from uh, the 60 briefly of Haley but I'm going to jump down to the inside and instead link up with the 14 of Chase Briscoe nobody can make it on field to the end of this race this has been a weird Talladega race where we've already seen one set of green flag pit stops the caution came out of course during that cycle but now to the inside of Ty Gibbs we would pass him and get up to P4 move to the outside of the 9 of Elliot here on lap 40 of 47 and that's not quite going to work and here comes the 14 of Briscoe I'm going to decide to stay linked up with my teammate of Ty Gibbs because I knew that was going to happen the 10 was going to jump up and I could get a pull off of him however it's not going to be as much of a pull as I was hoping I was expecting it to maybe allow me to get clear of the 14 it only gets me alongside fortunately though we don't really lose anything we jump back down in line behind the 14 and we'll stay into this top five and now we're going to power through passing the 10 of Gregson back into fourth place Gibbs Byron Austin Dillon all behind following Trace Briscoe on the inside he's going to get to the inside of Elliott pass him Ryan Priest tries to shut the door at the last second he's going to fail so now Briscoe to the lead for the Stura Haas racing machine will follow through in the second Ty Gibbs our teammate going to follow through in the third and now it's just about okay what do we do do we take the lead do we try to save field the answer is we're going to go for the lead I was hesitating right here but Briscoe left the door open I knew no matter what I couldn't make it on field to the end of this race and nobody can so we're going to go take the lead of this race here again in Talladega with help from our teammate of Ty Gibbs now but here we go two laps of field Gibbs is going to pit now the 14 of Briscoe we're going to get kind of hung out to dry but fortunately we'll maintain the lead but a bunch of cars pitting now led by Gibbs, Briscoe, Hamlin a lot of Toyota presence right there except for myself basically almost all the Toyotas just pitted and here we are on our own we got the 47 of Taylor Gray right there behind us now but we're going to be pitting of course this time by on the inside of Herbst now help from the 15 of Ryan Priest green flag pit stops in Talladega not common in Esker Heat 5 but it's happened twice today as we head down this front straight away now getting ready to come into the pits more cars staying out on the right side as I'm surprised they can go as far as they can as we've sped into the pit lane and that's going to be it I am so stupid. I am so sorry, guys. Focus, focus. We could still get a yellow here. I talked about it earlier, how I don't like being the lead car coming into the pit lane at a, a track like Talladega or Daytona. Uh, we go with the fewest options possible so we can reduce the time spent in the pit lane, and we had to wait. Look at all the cars going by, but finally, we are going to be able to get to go and head back onto the track, but we're going to be the last car running probably now as we head onto the circuit. Three laps to go. Uh, other cars now heading into the pit lane, but you can see we are coming at the tail end of this group, and there is actually the 23 of Corey Heim right there. Going to try and jump up behind him. The 27 of Sammy Smith is still on track. It's two laps to go for Sammy Smith in the Andretti Global Machine. He's all on his own. Everybody else is in the pit lane. Suarez, smoke pouring out of the back of the Meyer Shank machine, and another issue there for that team and that car. The caution's going to come out with three to go, and Smith, of course, has to pit from the lead while well, we're going to be all the way at the back of the pack. Ryan Blaney is going to be leading for this overtime restart here from Talladega. Ryan Blaney has not had an easy start to this 2020, what, five season this is now. And here he is with an opportunity to finally get back to victory lane at a track that he has been so strong at in his NASCAR Cup Series career. Blaney, if you remembered, missed half the season in season two due to a concussion after a major accident at the Coke 600. And he's come back and he hasn't quite been able to find that stride that he's always He's had he's not had a great season so far and he's looking to put that to rest here today with the win in Talladega but he's going to hold off Chase Elliott as well uh the 47 of Taylor Gray uh he's up there Byron's up there trying to put an end to a 73 race winless streak can he do it now you can see up ahead I mean look at how
how condensed this group of cars is. We have to check up for Haim in the 23. They're three wide, maybe even four wide as we head down this front straightaway now, approaching the final lap. And now it's just, there's no more teammates at this point. You're going. And look at this. They are three by three by three, some four as well. White flag in the air for the 12 of Ryan Bellaney. Shane Van Gisbergen there on the outside. Look at the damage done to that 97. What in the world happened there now? Kostecki just in front of us in the RCR 33 now as we continue through one and two. Blaney continues to lead. The 47's up there in the mix looking for the race victory. Imagine if Taylor Gray wins in his second ever NASCAR Cup Series start for the JTG team. Can it happen today? Down this back straight away. We are moving forward in these closing moments but obviously not going to be enough to get a top 10 as they're so stacked up here in front of us and there's nowhere to go. Ryan Blaney and the 47 of Taylor Gray lead the way down this front straight away. Byron in third through the trial. Well, who's going to get back here first? I think it's going to be Blaney who's all in control here in Talladega. Ryan Blaney returns to victory lane. He wins in Talladega over the 47 of Taylor Gray. William Byron in third place as well. 23rd, a disappointment to say the least for us here today in Talladega. Now, as you see, Blaney, his return to victory lane burnouts here from this Talladega Super Speedway in the finishing order as well. Uh, but, I mean, a huge shout out to the 47 of Taylor Gray there in second place. Of course, a truck series uh, regular IRL uh, trying to, of course, move his way up the ranks and here he is in our storyline, uh, nearly winning a Cup Series race from Talladega. Now, as you see, the bottom half of the grid as well, which unfortunately today includes us after a dominant stage two. We were so strong all race long and I got a speeding penalty and it was just, it was a silly speeding penalty to take. It was more of a carelessness, not a, I just took too much speed into there. Obviously, I did take too much speed into the corner uh, but yeah, embarrassing. And now a look at the point standings, uh, or the playoff grid, I should say. Uh, Blaney is now in, so that is another new winner. Nine races, nine winners. And we are the top driver without a win. Byron Elliott, surprisingly, has not yet uh, found victory lane. Big names still looking for wins as we head into the worst mile and a half on the calendar next episode, Texas, which is usually interesting in the game. I'll see you guys then. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.